before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I am joined this week on my channel with my friend Catherine Edwards from for our coffee chats, which of course we do every other week. So before we get into it, if you are not subscribed to Catherine's channel, go ahead and make sure you are subscribed. Check your subscriptions anyway, because I know, Catherine, we get those emails all the time from people where they say they've been unsubscribed from our channels and they didn't realize it. I don't want to say anything nefarious is happening. Sometimes I think it's just computer glitches on YouTube, but just double check that anyway. But how are you today, Catherine? I'm so, so today. I was saying off camera that I've got uh, one of my animals isn't very well today and that always hits me really hard. So um, yeah, I'm keeping fingers and toes crossed and doing everything I can for that. But in general, I'm really good. But at times like this, it does make you realise, you know, we talk so much, spend so much of our time talking about what's happening on a global environment and on a society level. But, you know, it really does bring home how important it is to really get your priorities right and look after those that are really close to you, whether they're humans or animals. That's so hard. That's so hard. I know we're in the middle of Mercury retrograde. We've got like 20 gazillion eclipse happening at the same time. There's also something called a devil comet that's going that's you know, when, when, when it rains, it pours. So just hold on tight, guys. If you're feeling super emotional or stressed, just take a deep breath. Um, do your shadow work and know that this, as everything in life, this too shall pass. But I was telling you, Catherine, I think for both of us and a lot of our friends watching right now, I, I know for me personally, especially, I'm so intrigued by human psychology and like why we do the things that we do and and the complexity of human psychology and like the fact that a lot of and even in the yoga i mean basically yoga is just studying the mind the yoga to divert the mind and the mind stuff and how a lot of times our our, our thoughts are subconscious and they're repetitive so we don't even recognize where there's a pattern but with that being said i text you and i'm going to share this channel quickly with our friends over on aquarius rising africa and solutions with shanti our, our friend shanti's channels we are going through, there's two cases that we have been going through, and that is the, the Jody um, Hildebrandt and the Ruby Frankie case, as well as the Lori Vallow and the Chad Daybell case, which for the Americans, if you're not familiar with that case, we're not going to get into the details. There's so much information. But I was listening to this channel to a lot of the podcasts because they have so many, so much information on the psychology of some of these these people, and it's the hidden true crime Um channel guys i'll link that down below so you can listen yourself and it's a husband and wife team the wife is an is an ex-journalist and the husband is a forensic psychologist and i find for the most part his analysis of human behavior especially with these high profile criminals to be absolutely fascinating and i was telling you Catherine, on one of their episodes they and i'm paraphrasing the way they said it they say we study we study the psych psychology of criminal behavior so we understand ourselves more. And I thought how how interesting that is. And there was a concept that they brought up, especially with Lori Vallow, who has been found guilty of the crimes that she committed, which was unaliving of her two children and her ex-husband, or I guess he wasn't her ex-husband at the time. She wanted him to be her ex-husband, so she decided to unalive him instead of just divorce him. And the reason why she felt like she was given special authority to do this is because she had gotten caught up in this religious belief uh from a book called visions of glory 
where um, they believed it was the end of times. They are part of the LDS, LDS Church, the Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church. And that for some reason, her and this guy, Chad, her affair partner, were like the supreme spiritual deities that could read dark and light souls. And people who they thought had dark souls, or they called them zombies. Seriously, guys, they called them zombies. These are grown-ass adults, older than me, calling them zomb these people zombies. And they had specific ways in which to eradicate the zombies from this world. So it's a horrific case. Horrific case. But it speaks a lot of delusional thinking. Um, the, I told Shanti the reason why I feel like this, this case is super important to look at, as well as the Hilda Brett Frankie case, is because... It mirrors a lot of what we're seeing in the, the truther community as well with delusions of grandeur, where people think they have the authority or they're getting revelation from God about certain individuals without actually having hardcore facts. You know, if your gut's telling you to stay away from a person, just stay away from them, right? You, if you don't have proof that they're actually doing a crime, that's, you know, you don't don't take the law into your own hands, right? And so um, Dr. John, as he's called, um, he brought up this idea of breaking bad, which is just an interesting concept. And of course, every time I hear Breaking Bad, I think of the television show. Did you guys get that television show? And, Got it, but I've never seen it. Yeah. I haven't seen it either, but it was a really, really popular television show. My boyfriend actually was a huge fan of it. And basically the premise of the story is it's about a, um, the series is about a, a chemistry teacher, a high school chemistry teacher who's kind of weak and puny and mild. And he finds out he has, um, he's going to die of cancer. He's got lung cancer. And so he breaks bad. And I didn't actually know that Breaking Bad was an actual psychological term until I listened. To, I just thought that was the name of a show. So basically, Dr. John was talking about, you know, there are certain people whose personalities will absolutely change. They'll break bad because of something in their lives. And yeah. basically, my, my understanding is that the court system and forensic psychologists will treat people who break bad differently from criminals who have past behaviors of manipulation who wouldn't technically, like Lori Valla going into her delusions, isn't technically her breaking bad because she already had signs of narcissism beforehand. And I just thought, what a fascinating concept and so i messaged you about talking about i know you took some notes on this but um so what do you think about this catherine this idea of breaking bad i think it's the i want to step back a bit and say about the human psychology it's so important that we understand this because we're in a society time now where all the focus is external about what everyone else is doing how controlled we've been and and you need to go through all these stages i'm not saying that's a bad thing but it's all about balance. And if you're not balancing that with being really honest about knowing yourself and what are your core values and are you living by them and, and what do you do and how do you react under pressure, you're not going to get anywhere or change anything in the world. If we're constantly expecting everyone else to change, however demonic they might seem, this is where the problem lies. So when you raise this, I thought it was absolutely fascinating because there's so many examples in history and we do always put that in inverted commas because we do understand that um you know i'm a bit sick of getting comments saying well don't you all know this and it's like oh honestly we'd never get anything covered if we had to explain every single right. sentence so when i'm saying about history i'm talking about certain times in history that we're pretty sure did happen certain scientific experiments that show just how capable humans are of doing a, seemingly normal humans are of doing absolutely atrocious things and this has been proved time and time and time again and everyone thinks yeah but i wouldn't but you know experience shows that's not the case at all and we've only got to look at how people behave during the lockdowns and the awful way that people speak to each other um my dog sorry about my dog scratching Indy. um so i think it's really really fascinating that we look into this about what because when we understand it first and foremost we can recognize warning signs in ourselves in those around us in those that we might be taking direction from um because you know so many people have got spiritual gurus they've got teachers they've got influential people that are driving some of their decision making and their thought processes so when you look at these and i i sort of went through and did some research on it there's lots of categories that have been identifying so far and it ties back into a lot of the other conversations that we've had 
So one of the first things that, that came across is dehumanisation, where individuals or groups are seen as less than human. And when we look at how general communities, even the so-called awake community, are speaking to each other, it's absolutely terrible. Look at the video we did about Kate and P. Diddy and everything, and look at the comments that are being made about Kate from people that have never met her, that have got no idea, they're just going on stories. Now, that doesn't mean it's not true but once you start dehumanizing anyone even if it's a public fi figure it's a very dangerous cycle to get onto behavioral wise oh and i've seen that i've i've spoken out about this a lot you know like i as as someone who's deeply studied spiritual texts i know that every single soul sold person has free will right and so if somebody is born into one of those families they still have the free will to not behave in that manner. And therefore, and I've told you, Catherine, I'm horrified. I've seen so many people talk about basically committing genocide yeah. on a particular blood group or on a particular family because they they're so vigilante, they've broken bad, right? These are people who would have otherwise been very kind people before they got kind of deluded. It goes into that delusional um, that all of a sudden they are somehow a vigilante force to be reckoned with. And um, yeah, absolutely. It's dehumanizing. It becomes totally dehumanizing. Yeah. And it's it's very, very worrying. I mean, I'm, I'm just picking up my phone because I want to read out to the viewers the name of a book. And I've mentioned this on some of my shows with Shanti. And um, there's a, a book that one of my um, clients recommended to me, but well, someone I was working with on the Asir actually, and it's called The Anatomy of Peace. I'll send you the link and you can link it below. And it's about nonviolent communication. And I've been studying this for years and I learned so much. I listened to it on Audible because I listened to a lot of books on Audible. But what's really shocked me is, is over the last few years, being involved in, you know, youtube platforms instagram so you know it, it's the way people speak to each other now and to to justify that anyone deserves to be spoken to like that you know even if you're dealing with someone who's genuinely evil you've got to have as wayne dar said you know if you squeeze an orange only orange juice can come out this is showing us the trauma that's still taught caught in all of us and and we all have this so it's not a shaming that you feel those emotions but if we don't recognize it and this is why programs like this can be so so important because yes if you study an extreme example then you can start to see the warning lines in yourself or in people in your life yeah another good example there's a great docuseries that's come out in america it's called quiet on the set i don't know if you guys got it in the uk and it's about i don't know if you guys ever got the the, the station the channel nickelodeon which was a kids channel i watched it growing up and yeah. it's about dan schneider and it basically it's, it's a horrifying documentary it goes through all the terrible stuff that was happening to these kids and you know we see in hollywood where people are like everyone in hollywood's bad everyone's so bad well, it's just recently come out that on one of those shows, and I, I'm not super familiar with the show because this show was released after I was a kid. Um, one of the young adult actors who was casted in this family for the show, the young girls who were supposed to be his little sisters, during the whole production, the war when they were basically at work, this male actor, this young adult male actor, was constantly watching Dan Schneider, the producer or whatever, who's being um, called out. And he, they showed footage, behind the scenes footage, where the producer would be creepy with the girls and this actor would come in and like jokingly kind of like push them yeah. apart. And so he was aware, but he was trying to protect these young girls who were his on-screen sisters. And now that these girls are older, they've come out and said something like how much they appreciate him doing that. So when we, when we, when we, don't have a vigilante perspective when we can look at things and really hold back judgment we can see that there are good people within this bad group and so we can start to be a little bit more grounded and and it is a projection right like when we when we go vigilante i think sometimes we're we're acting on our own wounds our our own traumas yeah. versus like sitting down and having a very grounded approach you know collecting anybody can accuse anybody of anything yeah anybody can do that and that's why in court systems, hearsay is not admissible. And that is why they don't they don't have a bunch of psychics or tarot card readings readers sitting in the witness box 
answering questions, right? They have actual evidence that they have to present to the jury, like actual hardcore evidence. So, so yeah, I, I think that whole, we have to really watch ourselves when we go to that place where we want to just react because of a, a, a wound that we have within ourselves. And perhaps that reaction isn't, isn't good. You two wrongs don't make a right, you know? Absolutely. And I really feel moving forward. I, I did an interview, which is going to be airing next week, last night, where we discussed this in detail. I really feel that we're at the stage now in humanity for all of us. And, and Bryce and I say this all the time when we're having these conversations, we are, we mean us, we're including us in all this, of course. Yeah. Um, we're not pretending we've got it all sorted, but I think now is the time for this deep emotional and spiritual healing uh, that is going to take forefront for all of us to break this generational trauma because there's not a single person watching this that will have not experienced um, you know, some degree of trauma or might still be experiencing some degree of trauma. And, and it's getting rid of the shame of understanding that and allowing ourselves first and foremost, and also others in our lives, if they choose to address that and do the work to actually be allowed to change and show up as their original pure person. Because, you know, let's face it, who hasn't, who's watching this hasn't reacted at some stage in their time and in a way that they're ashamed of or would rather not have done, because we're all dealing with this trauma. And at the moment, it's been triggered on every minute of every day, wherever you look or listen, you're going to have those triggers just being thrown at you. So no wonder everyone's in this state of complete overreactivity. And a, a huge part of what I do outside my interviews is working with humans and animals on stress and cortisol and the effect it has on the physical body and the emotional body and the spiritual body. And you've got to deal with all three of those together. It's so important to deal with those three together. So, you know, get your physical body back in balance. So it's got the resilience to actually deal with some of these things. So I think it's it, the time is really, it, it, it's all risen up. It's like the foam rising to the top of the ocean with the surf. It's all there. And now we've got to really start mopping that up and looking at behaviors like this, not from a point of view of I would never behave like that, but looking at it from a point of view of, okay, what can I learn from this? Yeah. And that's what I love about the, the head try the head this channel right here, you guys, because that is literally the way that from the episodes I've listened to the way that Dr. John takes these people into consideration. Um, this was fascinating where he talked about Lori Vallow, perhaps having much housings by proxy, uh, which is not something that's ever come up in other, you know, this is the, one of the daughters that she unalived and the, and the, the young girl and the, and the thumbnail there, but just talking about like what, br what, what brings someone to do that. He talked about like, you know, needing validation from a male figure because the daughter's doctor was um, a male and the, the, the relationship with her dad and goes, and it's just so fascinating because then we can take that and say, where can I apply this to my own psychology? Where, yeah. if I, you know, I've I've never had much houses by proxy. I've never done any of the horrific crimes that the people they cover have done. And I hope to God that I would never do that. But I can take these extreme examples and be like, that's interesting. That's something I need to look at within myself so that I'm a more balanced human being so that I'm more, I'm more, um, a, a better a better person in society um and how some of these um they, they get into this one right here they get into like more cultish behavior like why people start following you know um these grandiose leaders that um claim to have all the answers and a lot of times these grandiose leaders are telling you you're special you're yes. one of the chosen ones you've got a god has a plan for you and that's that's dangerous so then it plays on our own insecurity so we all of a sudden next thing we know we're in a group that's labeling people zombies and and now we think that we're their job is to unalive them because of that initial crack in our own psyches where we felt the validation by some complete stranger who claims to be a spiritualist telling us we're special yeah so it's absolutely frightening and i think what I'm loving is there's so much information out there this now to help us because so many people have been caught in abusive relationships in all sorts of areas of their lives and they haven't had this information at hand. And, you know, have to be honest and say modern psychology and um, 
um, psychiatric things have not got a good success rate for resolving these issues. But luckily, there's so many other processes out there now that people have got access to, to really find something that works for them. Because, you know, the the, the mainstream ways of doing it have got a terrible success rate, yeah. as far as I can see. Doesn't mean there aren't some very good practitioners out there that absolutely are. But in general, this problem is so rife throughout society in terms of all sort of whether you want to call them mental health issues, they are absolutely rife at the moment and we need to do something about it. And that does need a multi prone to touch. But one of the other things that came out was social pressure. Yeah. Now look at how social pressure has really played into everything at the moment, but look at how it also plays out on the alternative media platforms because the amount of times you and I have been told shame on us because we've discussed a certain subject or we've had a certain guest on or we've stopped having a certain guest on. And it's like unbelievable the the privileged attitude that people think that they can shame you for doing something that they disapprove of when all they've got to do is change channel. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's the arrogance, right? It's the it's yes. the, it's the arrogance when when someone tries to shame you, taking YouTube as an example for something that you've decided to do on your own channel, which they don't need to know why you've decided to do something on your own channel. For me, some of the decisions I've made on my channel were literally, in some ways, life and death, and that the audience doesn't need to know that. But I made the decision and to be shamed for it. It's that arrogance that this person yeah. thinks that they are better than you. Um, as I say, it, it makes me feel like I'm a dancing monkey. Like I'm a, I should be enslaved to particular people and therefore entertain them in the way they want to be entertained when no, just change the channel. Just change and isn't that what they're, these same people are criticizing in the entertainment music? Because yeah. look how all the top people have been caught in that trap. Yep. of the dancing monkey and then it's very difficult to get out of it so in one respect you're shaming people for doing it and the next respect you're treating others and again it's about recognizing it isn't it Bryce recognizing you're doing it and course correcting exactly and I you know I, I'm not saying I have all the answers but there are yeah. so many channels that I watch and there are great content creators out there that are not in our disclosure community that I love their channels but they, I might put on an episode every now and again of theirs that I'm not super into. You know what I do? I just go to the next episode. Yeah. I don't feel the need to get on the comment section and start berating them because I don't particularly like this particular episode. You can't bat a, a hundred all the time. You know, so it, it's, or if they stopped, you know, I don't feel the need when people stop collaborating with other people. I don't feel the need to ask them why. Like, I feel like that's their personal business. And that's that. It's not my business, you know? And so it's, 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 and I do think, you know, social media does have something to do with that. I think before social media, you know, there are pros and cons to everything, but I do think before social media, like when I was a kid, we had a better understanding of boundaries, a better understanding of our own boundaries and other people's boundaries. And we, we understood that some things were not our business. You know, and, and when um, you have that face to face interaction, you immediately not only getting a response <laughs> straight away, but secondly, picking up on the energy in the situation. And as you grow, you get better and better at reading the situation. So that's such a good point because, you know, social media, I, I just always think is people shouldn't say anything on social media that they wouldn't say to someone's face. Yeah. Yep. And also just not expect some things are just not for us. You know, so not everything is 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 going to be relevant or pertinent to us at the time. And that's absolutely fine because we're all going through different things and being thrown different curveballs at different times. So just because something isn't relevant and helpful to you doesn't mean that it's not helpful and just what someone else needs. We've had multiple examples of where something might have got a lot of hate from one group of people but it's been enough to stop someone committing suicide for yeah. example because they, yeah. they they needed to hear that message so this social pressure i get it i do completely understand why because we all want to fit in yeah. you know it's part of being human that we need to be part of a community because that's how we survive so i do get that but you can there's some beautiful examples of people doing it in the right way and it would be lovely to see more of those getting airtime rather than the ones that are being done in the wrong way absolutely i totally agree with you as you're saying that i'm thinking you know 99.9 percent .9 of of the people that watch our channels i consider our friends and they're great and they yeah. leave amazing comments and they're but it's that like 
one percent of people that just feel like they own you and, and the, you look at the really big channels out there and i love communicating with people in the comment section because that was kind of the point of me opening up my channel but some of the bigger channels you can tell they don't even look at their comment section they can't because it amazes me like yeah. some of the people that i would literally and okay it's just my opinion but everything they're putting out is to help people yeah everything like with such generosity you know uh, so things and i look at some of the comments and i'm just like how can you be so aggressive to this person that is giving you all this free knowledge all this some of the research stuff i've been looking at because i've been looking at quite a lot of the um climate stuff recently again because that i've got a background in that and i'm like wow there's some people that have literally given what would take me a year to get that research together and they're giving it all for free and then they're getting absolutely slated and it's just that looking at these aspects of psychology what we can do because we everyone watching anything on youtube understands about ai to a certain extent and how we behave on these platforms is literally programming the ai oh absolutely 100 percent so, Honestly, you know, if you don't want to see that behavior in the society and the community you live, then don't engage in it. Stop it. Turn it around. Because you also see some brilliant people step in. And we see this a lot on our channels. Some really, really great people that step in and calm it down and course correct and turn people around. And, you know, you can see how quickly that can be done with the right approach and the right communication. And I suppose it just shows how hurt people are you know how yeah. hurt and how isolated they are that they need to do that yeah it's well there's so much manipulation too like as you're saying that i know we've talked about this before so i don't want to beat a dead horse but you know some some pushback that i've I, you know i created two two shadow work challenges one 30 day one 60 day for completely for free it took me a long time to put that together because i've spent 18 years i paid thousands of dollars to go to india to study at kpjyi to learn all this stuff and I totally love doing it for free, but the minute, the minute I put some of my videos on Gnostic, all of a sudden I'm a bad guy. But reality yeah. is that I need money to survive. I need to pay for the roof over my head. I got to pay the bills. I got to put food on my table. And, you know, and that after doing all this work and giving all this stuff for free, now I'm a bad guy for putting some stuff behind a paywall, a very low paywall at that. And, um, you know, it's like this, this manipulation where people justify you know martyrdom is of the negative side martyrdom mm. is not of the light it's not of the light putting your what is it, an airplane you put your air mask on first so that you can be grounded and strong and aware and conscious to help somebody else get their mask their mask on and and but yet people have been it's been so you know twisted in people's mind but yet the people making these comments they have jobs how would they feel if somebody came to their boss and said you know this person should be slaving for you for free Even and also we have no control over the ads that are shown on these channels yeah. like youtube we have no control in fact someone has some brilliant listeners send me some absolute hysterical screenshots of the most inappropriate ones they're playing my video now i haven't even switched on monetization on these yeah, videos yeah. I've not, you know, even given them permission, but, but by going on YouTube, of course, YouTube has to pay as for their bills right. as well. So, of course, they have to have advertising. So, I haven't got a problem for that. But then you can go on these others behind a paywall and get them without any ads. So, it's just a choice and yeah. different information. And most of us would pay to attend a class or get some teaching or go on a course and things like this. And the whole point is, is it's a choice. It's like supplements you take as a health coach. Now, I get loads of people saying about the price of things and it's like yeah but the cheap crap doesn't work so you can spend yeah. five years trying product after product that not only isn't working but is actually putting more stress on your body and making you more stressed as a person because it seems like there's no way out of this or you could actually listen to someone that works with this full time and i'm not saying take my word for it but any of these professionals that work in this and actually take something that works but these companies have got to produce and test and 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 manufacture really safely in places that we can actually trust and that all costs money yeah. so I think with this um, social pressure, and that links into the other one of authority, it's like, well, just be really careful what you wish for. You know, if you if we moan about the nefarious forces, well, they're the ones that are advertising on the platforms that we can all watch for free. So yeah. listen, 
I've said this to my boyfriend many times. There are some people in the truther community that if the world was the way they wanted it to be, it would be 10 times worse. Like the controllers of, controllers of the world now are kittens compared to what some of these people in the truth, the, the, the control, the um, handmaid's tale type of situation, like the, the complete theocracy where it's one religion and it's it's terrifying so yeah you you, you and you're you're right you know it's 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 that give and take right and that that is i've said that plenty of times even though youtube is obviously run by some pretty nefarious people there's a lot of benefit to youtube as well it's a brilliant you know without the censorship it would be a brilliant platform it's a way to yes. advertise it's so like much a over the years for yes. youtube so yeah. much it's 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 how we've all met you guys you know like there's there's positive aspects and it's interesting like with with the whole money thing it's like i i've just I talked about it in one of my videos i'm planning a zoom workshop i've got two workshops in person here in atlanta one on zoom to do the alchemy of movement it's gonna be like a three-hour workshop i'm gonna create a, a, a manual for you a workbook for you and there is going to be a price for it and i've i've a lot of people most people were like yes let's do it let's do it let's do it i did get an email where someone that told me i should be doing this for free so you want to steal information from me you mm -hmm. want to have me labor and put together all the the years of of education of thousands of dollars i've paid in my own education put together a workbook for you teach you stuff for three hours and and not get anything and you want to deplete me of that so you basically want to steal you you want to justify that's what that is it's stealing energy there has but to the be is, stealing energy is so important it is absolutely that and where's that going to get you it's for me it's just going to kill me it will just mm -hmm. end up depleting well, where's it going to get the person that's stealing that because one they won't value it yeah and nope. secondly um what message are they giving out to the universe you know if that's what you want to do to treat other people that's what you're going to get back which brings on to the other one of desensitization and i think this is huge at the moment i was really shocked as a mum growing up seeing i, I was really lucky because we live in the countryside and when my children were growing up we had absolute rubbish internet connection so they couldn't get all the computer games that all their friends could get and then when once i went round to a friend's house and saw the violence in these and everything, I was absolutely horrified because desensitization happens at all levels. And I think we're seeing it a lot in the communication that we see on social media platforms where people are so used to throwing, it's a man, it's a transgender, it's a, a they're in child sacrifice, they're this, they're that, these terms unfortunately it devalues it for the lot of the actual video, yeah. for the actual vid victims, because you know it's even saying you know everything's labeled as i can't say the world young per as as traffic now yeah. not yeah. everything is let's let's just you know i'm not it's it's all on a scale and abuse isn't a competition and and trauma isn't a competition but equally this desensitization when we throw this these terms around uh, without really thinking about them we are desensitizing ourselves and we're desensitizing others. And that is really dangerous because that's one of the key things in terms of breaking bad that happens where exposure to violence, unethical behavior over time desensitizes individuals and then they're more likely to engage in those themselves. And that has been proven scientifically time after time after time. Yeah, I mean, you even look at it like you, you look at like even with kids, you look at a high school or a middle school and there's mm -hmm. like a clique of girls and one girl is usually the ling, uh, the re uh, ringleader who's mean and it just all the other girls follow suit and are mean to another kid and uh, you know it, it's 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 they follow suit it's it's um you know it's uh what, that they even Dr. John talked about it and we referred to it that experiment they did where they had the person hooked up to the voltage and it's just unbelievable but you it is believable we've seen it happen yeah. you know and, yeah, and world war ii i'm, I'm sure at so least 90 percent of the the nazis were probably before then probably pretty good people and then look what they ended up doing and any soldier you know i mean i, I it, it's so complex this and there are you know situations where any animal will fight for their life absolutely um and that's not wrong i'm not saying that's wrong at all and we're not saying this isn't about right or wrong it's about recognizing these behaviors in ourselves so that we can turn things because the level of anger that i see 
projected on public platforms is absolutely terrifying to me. I mean, talk about mob behaviour. And it is really important to take accountability for that because what message are you feeding back to yourself all the time? It's it's really frightening. You know, go look at the Dr. Emoto water experiments about how words change the crystallized structure of the water. And we're at least 70 percent water more and less in different organs of our body. And this does matter. It, it, we are shaping the society that we're living in. And I would so love to see that turned around with a little bit of respect, a little bit of um proper communication heartfelt communication seeing people not dehumanizing anyone and i i don't even mean just not dehumanizing it same comes to our treatment of animals every single living being to be treated with respect as much as we possibly can yeah and you know the thing too as you're saying that as well the mom i tell you something popped in my head the lack of accountability when someone realizes they're wrong people don't i mean i had that happen the other day i had a you know, uh, we've talked about this before, but the comment section on YouTube, the YouTube will shuffle the comments around sometimes, yeah. like, especially if there's responses made. And so it's never in the order in which it originally started, right? It shuffles up. Well, I had this guy like write this. I actually, I think I ended up, this particular guy, I actually ended up having to block him yesterday, but he had left this like long essay on one of my videos claiming that I had deleted one of his comments because there was some criticism, which I hadn't. And he went and I left it up, but then he went back later and he com he replied to his own comment saying, oh, never mind. I just saw the comment still up, but he didn't apologize. No, he called me the most horrific names in that essay that he wrote in the comment section, accusing me of doing something that I didn't do because he had a criticism of me. Well, this guy can't succeed and everyone that's read that comment. Yeah. And he did not go back and apologize or delete the comment. Be like, I am so sorry. I that I misjudged. I realized the comment just wasn't in the order that it originally was. And the funny thing is, is once I got once I got the notification, he had already replied because I hadn't even looked at any of the. You could tell that I hadn't heard anything. I hadn't had a chance to reply to any of the comments. And um, this this guy. That's another thing too. People oftentimes will manipulate and gaslight you by saying that they'll leave like. And we see this in life too, not just on the comments section but i'm using the comment section as an example and i've said this on my channel many 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 times disagreements criticism totally fine abuse is not okay mm -hmm. and so some people will leave abusive comments and then say what it's just constructive criticism mm -hmm. no it's not name calling is not constructive criticism you know going going at somebody's character and their integrity as a person that you don't even know you just guy didn't even know me calling me all sorts of names in a long essay, degrading me as a human because he couldn't find his own comment, which was there, just wasn't, he just didn't understand the comments had been shuffled by YouTube. And then instead of deleting that comment and then leaving an apology, he just said, oh, I see my, talk about arrogance, talk about desensitization, talk about, you literally said that to another human being when that other human being hadn't done anything to you. And you didn't even have the, the integrity yourself or the balls yourself to actually apologize. And I think that's a re that also leads on to the sort of doing your own research. Now, not everyone has to research everything. But what I mean is like, I would not ask someone a question. So I, I did a post about uh, climate change recently, and I'm not doing hand signals to Bryce. I've actually genuinely been cuddling my old guinea pig, and I've got fur in my eyes, so I do apologise for filling me while my eyes. I'm not doing some subliminal sig signal. But, yeah, you see, the thing is, again, when you're asking, put some effort in first. So it's not our job to teach you how to use YouTube. Trust us. we get It changes all the time. We've got yeah. to learn ourselves. Um, it's not, if you've got a situation and there's an in, something, someone's put a comment and you've got an open mind, say air fryers. So I've been doing some stuff about how toxic and awful air fryers are. Now, I have no reason to put stuff about air fryers unless it's with a genuine will to help people. Yeah. Because I've had loads of people that bought them for their parents recently, elderly parents and things. But if you if I put something about how toxic they are, on a short video or something like this. It's not my job to then give you all the research papers to do it. Go and look yourself. And if you then can't find it, I love people coming back to me and say, well, I've looked here, here and here. 
but I couldn't find much. Have you got any suggestions? But don't come straight away and expect me to be your free teacher because yeah. I'm not. I've done my research, which is why I've put something out there to start the thought process to do it. Now we're not making this all about us. What we're saying is this is where it comes to the Breaking Bad. This is where these awful society behaviors. Look at the riots. Look at how a lot of people behave in riots. Look at looting. Yeah. Look at what happens a lot of time when um soldiers or or charities go to somewhere where there's been a tsunami and how one person can go and do a rape and suddenly it opens the floodgates and normal people that would never do that in their normal life do things that they will then probably regret for the rest of their life and so this is a subject of normal behavior and these patterns stop everyone if you study the psychology of the breaking bad if you study the psychology of a lot of things i was saying i watched the hunger games prelude movie and look about how snow went bad it's all in there it's it's really all in there because these these small steps make a difference yeah absolutely you you. actually speak louder than words and if you're constantly behaving in a way that's really against your own ethics or how you'd like to be treated that will come back to bite all of us absolutely 100 percent. it's having that uh, self-governance over yourself and and again yeah i, I want to reiterate too like i find myself having that vigilante mindset from time to time but i have to say wait a minute nope sit back sit back just let it unfold there's always more to the story and you know it's that you know an eye what's that gandhi said an eye for an eye for an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind yeah you know and um and yeah i i want to i just thought it was such an interesting this whole break like where where do we break bad where do we where does a regular person that would never hurt anybody break bad and all of a sudden be in prison for unaliving their two kids you know like you know the, the again the, the the tv show he finds he has incurable cancer and so he all of a sudden breaks bad and becomes a big he because he's a chemist he starts to make meth and becomes a drug lord and his personality just totally but it's all his wounds right like yeah. he's been this wimpy just walk get go uh, uh doormat of a high school teacher until all of a sudden he had nothing to lose and something snapped and he broke bad. So wh where is that breaking point for all of us? And have there been times like, you know, as you, I, I can agree too, there are times in my life I look back, God, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't, why did I do that? I broke bad at that point and why did I do that? You know, and then we course correct. You know, mistakes aren't, you know, if, 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 a, if, a, if you can learn from a mistake, then that mistake becomes wisdom. So don't be afraid of the mistakes you've made, just learn from them and they become wisdom, right? Yeah, I think, it, uh, you know, it's a, such a consistent theme and whatever lots of people are talking about at the moment, it's those little things that really do make a difference. It's a re little things. We all sit there and say on a, a global scale or a national scale that every so many of us have been talking about, we just have to turn around and say no, but that has to start with good behavior we can't have a society that we want to live in if we're not demonstrating and also the final thing i want to say is about having really good friends like we can have really good conversations where we will have the we know we can pick each other up on things if we yeah. are going of course on something having friends like that in your life is absolutely crucial because we all have blind spots we yes. will not yes. be able to see it all ourselves so when you've got someone that you genuinely know has got your best interest at heart, like I started listening to the video that you've just um, put up about your analysis of that video. Um, I haven't got very far through it, Bryce, but one of the things you said, and I thought spot on, was like one of the co one of the comments in the the under the video said, "When a grown man tells you you shouldn't do something with tears in his eyes, you should listen." And when a really good friend that you know has got your back tells you something that's really uncomfortable about yourself, you should listen. And that's what I would say is have those good friends in your life that can pick you up on it before you go too off track. Because like whether you're an alcoholic or whether it's a behavior pattern or a way of speaking, the more ingrained that habit becomes, the trickier it is to break it. I love that. And there, yeah, that, that, um, I went through the comment section of one of the big videos and it's, it's, it's fascinating to read the comments, but I will say 
with that being said too, I'll, I'll kind of end on a humorous. I was going through the YouTube, like, or the Instagram, TikToky shorts, TikToky, what you know, the little shorts that they put on Instagram, and um, this guy was responding to like the whole live, live, live every day like it's like it's the last day of your life. And he goes, "Do you know if I did that, I'd wake up the next day with a couple of warrants out for my arrest and no money in my <laughs> bank account because I would go and like the first twelve hours would be dedicating to me punching people." And then, and I was, well, that's not breaking bad, right? Like if you're told this is your last day to live, like you got nothing to lose, but he's able to look at that and be like, I can't do that because I will break bad. Basically is what he yeah. was. Saying. I will wake up the next morning with no money and a couple warrants out for my arrest, you know, because let's be honest, if I was told I had 24 hours left to live, I'm probably not going to be spending it going out to eat with my friends, I'm probably going to be taking revenge out on people, you know, but to have that self-awareness, right? That self-awareness, like we think that if, if we had 24 hours to live, we would spend it with our friends and family. But if you have that self-awareness to know that you would be out there seeking out people that had wronged you, then, then you know that that's not, that's not a motto you should live by. And that's that self-awareness. That's so funny. Yeah. I've never seen that perspective, but it makes sense. It really does make sense. Yeah. You got nothing to lose, right? You, yeah. That, that, that instant you have nothing to lose and so if you have no and that that and, you know the flip side as janice joplin said like that's true freedom right freedom and bobby mcgee freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose but is that the break for some people that might not be a breaking bad for some people that that might be literally wanting to be with their friends and family but for others that might not be the switch that's flipped that wasn't in the you know the, the the television show Breaking Bad again. I did, I never watched. It. I knew the premise of it. My boyfriend loved it. A lot. It was a huge show here. Um, but I will say, if you guys want more of a an entertaining uh, synopsis of what that is, watch the show. It was a great show. It won a lot of awards. Great actors. Um, and it does make you think. There is even though it's great acting and it's you know he's living out probably a lot of people's fantasies of all of a sudden being this ba this badass as Doctor John was saying. It does give us a perspective. A yeah. psychological that's actually pretty realistic and yeah i mean even the show weeds that was did that show come out in, in england as well weeds um alanis okay. morissette was in it um it I'm was i i only watch stuff that people recommend to me um i must just finish this i i think i've mentioned this on a couple of others but it's really important there's so much to learn from some of these shows or films so I watched with my son at the uh, the weekend, which was a bit cringy because of the sex scenes, but um, at the girl with the dragon tattoo, he's a grown up now, but it was still cringy. Um, but it absolutely brilliant. And there's one bit in that film, I won't give too much away at the end, where the baddie says, um, it's absolutely incredible. Every single one of my victims has overridden their inf their intuition for politeness and because they are not wanting to offend because you knew you shouldn't come back into that house. He said, not one of my victims have I dragged in. They volunteered walking in, even though everything about their intuition was saying, don't go back in yeah. because you didn't want to offend. You didn't want to be rude. And, you know, that will be the last thing you ever do. And that's an extreme example, but it, with a lot of these things with the breaking bad we know we feel bad if i've gossiped about someone i do feel really bad afterwards and i know it is wrong and i know it doesn't serve anything and that i deserve that back to me um so a lot of the time whatever it is we're doing we do know we just need to listen a little bit more to ourselves but not be too hard on ourselves and we certainly shouldn't expect ourselves to be perfect but recognize it and just start course correcting a bit more Absolutely. 100%. And I will say I can't, I want to hear y'all's perspective, our friends watching, what's yeah. your perspective on this Breaking Bad psychology? Like, again, I didn't even know that Breaking Bad was an actual psychological, like a psychology term. I thought it was just the name of a show. So I, <laughs> but I didn't even know that that was something that they actually label as Breaking Bad versus, you know, repeated behavior. Like, what's your when do you catch yourself like are, have there been times for if you want to share for audience where you have noticed um you breaking bad like where you have to pull yourself back a little bit just like that TikToker where he's like no you don't want me to live today like it's the last day of my life because yeah. you might you might get punched in the face so um you know like i can't wait to see because that's actually really funny and really honest 
Yes, we're yeah. really honest. Like, where are your governors? Like, where yeah. has has there been a time, even in this, let's, let's, you know, even in this, like, truther community, and you don't have to be sp specific about this, but was there ever a time with you guys, like, on Telegram or, or Signal where you found yourself a part of a group where you started to get kind of weirded out by where the where the delusion was going or where the conspiracy was going like like in the chad daybell Lori vallow case or the jody hildebrandt ruby frankie case where they their delusions in a lot of ways how they started was a lot like us where we knew certain yeah. things were bad we knew that but they went it went overboard and it became very delusional very quickly so there have been times where you caught yourself and had to remove yourself from you don't have to say don't say the group's names but don't like yeah you know, where did you find the strength to leave that tribe, to leave that gang, you know, to leave these friends that you've made to, because you realize there was something unhealthy going on. And again, if you're not familiar with the Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell case, um, I would highly recommend either check out my videos with Shanti on solutions with Shanti or prayers rising Africa or hidden true crime, or you could just Google it. It's a crazy case. It's very, it's a wild true crime. It's, it's gets into angels and demons and zombies. I kid you wow. not grown ass adults talking about zombies. So, so it's, it's very interesting, the psychology and God bless those children that lost their lives because of their mother's delusion. So, um, talk about breaking bad. So anyway, you guys, well, next week we will be back over on Catherine's channel and, um, yeah, again, double check your subscriptions, make sure that you are still subscribed to us. And is there any party words you have for our audience today, Catherine? Thanks so much for being here and check out our other, the other platform channel that begins with our rumble. I'll say it quickly. Check out our things on there because the content that we can't put on here, we both put on there. We had a great one with Tamara earlier this week. I loved it. I no. just love, I love these discussions when we're talking through and not pretending to know the answers. You know, this yeah. is a really important thing is I, I, I love the fact that I've relaxed that pressure on myself to know. Yeah. It just yeah. makes such a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I will I will second that, Catherine, with even the law of one it says at third density, this is not the density of knowing. This is the density yeah. of choice. That's what this density is about. It's about choice. It's not about knowing. So, all right, Love you guys, well, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you're surviving. We're in the midst of a lunar eclipse, solar eclipse. The Devil's Comet, Mercury Retrograde. So just take a deep breath. Maybe that's, maybe that's why this conversation came up because your emotions are going to be unhinged probably a little bit. Just observe them. And yeah, we will talk to you all very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.